The Austro-Hungarian Navy only ever built a single class of dreadnought battleship. The successors to this class were cancelled by the outbreak of the First World War, and the Austro-Hungarian Navy suffered a critical existence failure shortly thereafter. Further, most people would not have expected a largely land-based empire with minimal coastline to have a navy, but in the finest human tradition, their rivals the Italians had a navy, and so they had to have a navy as well. The two had met in battle at the start of the Ironclad Age, and there had been a rivalry between them ever since. Although the first dreadnoughts of their nation, the ships were designed at the time of the second generation of dreadnoughts in the major navies, and so they managed to avoid some of the errors that were occurred in the first generation. Due to the relatively slow pace and limited size of the shipyards available, the first ship was laid down in 1910 and completed in 1912, just as the last of the four was being started. The ships were called Viribus Unitis, Tegethoff, Prinz Eugen, and Svent Istvan. The ships would displace 20,000 tons, and despite steam turbine propulsion, they were somewhat slower than average, being capable of about 20 knots at maximum speed. Because they were designed mainly to contest the local area against the Italian fleet, they were also relatively short-ranged. Their armour was about average for a battleship of this period, with an 11-inch belt thickness, but the underwater protection was not especially good, a fact that would come back to haunt them later in their lives. The main armament comprised four triple turrets armed with 12-inch guns, with two turrets placed forward and two aft in super-firing pairs. This gave the ships a fairly wide-ranging broadside that was amongst the heaviest of the second-generation dreadnoughts. Although the Italians had been the first to use a triple turret on their battleships, the Austro-Hungarians were able to match this because their gun manufacturers were already working on a triple turret design for Russia. One throwback to older designs was a split secondary battery with 12 heavier 150mm guns in casement mounts for general use and 18 70mm guns in open mounts for use against destroyers and torpedo boats. A few anti-aircraft guns and four torpedo tubes completed the ship's firepower. Three of the ships were built in Austrian yards, with the last one, the Svent Istvan, being built in a Hungarian yard, which unfortunately had never built anything larger than a destroyer before, which somewhat delayed the ship's construction until well into the war, as well as raising some issues with build quality. In World War I, the bulk of the ship's activity was restricted to a prolonged staring match with the Italian and Allied fleets, with both sides making limited forays to try and entice the other to battle on their own terms, whilst avoiding minefields and numerous small attack craft present in the cl closer confined coastal waters. The Austro-Hungarian fleet would also suffer from an increasing lack of coal for fuel. Three of these ships set out to provide some cover for the German battlecruiser Gerben and the cruiser Breslau early in the war, but didn't end up actually engaging any Allied ships. Shortly after Italy entered the war in 1915, they would bombard the Italian coast and a naval base at Ancona before heading back to port before the Italian fleet could respond. Finally, in 1918, a new fleet commander decided to attack the Allied blockade at the southeast corner of Italy that was containing the Austro-Hungarian fleet. However, the Svent Istvan and Tegethoff set out late, and in an effort to catch up, the Svent Istvan overheated its engines and had to slow down. Whilst it was raising steam to increase speed again, the large clouds of smoke attracted the attention of two Italian torpedo boats. Whilst one of them suffered numerous malfunctions that prevented a successful launch, the other managed to hit Svent Istvan with a pair of torpedoes. Due to the inadequate underwater protection, the ship was unable to keep up with the flooding or reach the coast, thus sinking in just over three hours and becoming one of two battleships sinking at sea to ever be captured on film. Due to their cover being blown, the other ships then returned to port. Finally, in 1918, the Viribus Unitis was destroyed in harbour by Italian special forces using an early form of manned torpedo. Again, the poor underwater protection meant that a single mine sent the ship to the bottom in 15 minutes. The Tegethoff would be taken by the Italians and used in a film about the sinking of her sister ship during the war before being broken up after the Washington Naval Treaty. The Prince Eugen was taken over by France, who disarmed it, and then used it in aerial bomb attack testing before finally taking it out to the Atlantic and using it as a target for their own battleships, where it would eventually sink. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.
Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.